Good day. I'll talk about Smaller's maximums and the Mandora response. And to further contextualize my discussions, I will state my positionality. I am a non-indigenous linguist working on endangered languages and scripts in my own country. And that country is the Philippines. So the Philippines is an archipelago in Southeast Asia. It is home to 180 plus languages, predominantly of the Austronesian language family. In this talk, I'll focus on the island of Mindoro, the seventh largest island in the Philippines, and also the ancestral domain of the eight different Mangyan indigenous cultural communities. So Mangyan is an umbrella term to refer to eight different ethno-linguistic groups or indigenous cultural communities uh, on the island of Mindoro. We will focus on the southern uh, Mangyan groups, which are Hanunuwo and Buhid. So Hanunuwo and Buhid languages are relatively vigorous. They are um, healthy languages. However, um, their indigenous script or the script that they use are very much endangered. Um, it's also important to note that the indigenous script use is only um, observed in the southern Mangyan groups and not in the northern Mangyan groups. So here you have the ISO code for the Hanunuwo script or Surat Hanunuwo and the ISO code for the Buhid script or Surat Buhid. Um, it's also important to note here that the, the scripts here that are being shown or represented are the forms that were registered um, at ISO. But as we have seen in our work, um, the Buhid script actually had, the Buhid community actually uses two different scripts and at least two different styles. And the Hanunuwo community also have two um, distinct sets and also both scripts have um, geographic variation in like uh, the forms used in certain areas or in certain barangays. So what are the smallest maximums? Um, these are factors to consider when designing an orthography or basically um, criteria um, used to devise a new working orthography devised by Smollett et al. Um, in 1963. There are five maximums. The first one would be uh, maximum motivation. The second one would be maximum representation. Third one, maximum ease of learning fourth one, maximum transfer, and fifth one, maximum ease of reproduction. Supposedly, um, it is arranged by um, order of significance, but it really depends on the specific context. So let's talk about each um, maximum. So for the first one, maximum motivation, usually it refers to the motivation of the learner to learn the script or to, to learn the orthography. But here I have expanded it to refer to the motivation to use the language, to the motivation to use the script, and to the motivation to use the orthography, the device orthography. In, in, in a general description of motivation, so the, the current project or the project that we're we're doing was conceptualized as a response to the request of Buid and Hanunuwo communities in Mindoro. Elders and community leaders observe that there are less and less people who know how to write in their indigenous scripts, especially among the, the children and the youth. So, and as we observe in, in our surveys and fieldwork, even among adults and some elders, there are less and less people who know how to write um, the indigenous script because of the, the, the dominance of the, the Latin script. And this um, diminishing use 
is especially true for the Buhid script, which again has two different uh, and separate systems for the northern community and the southern community. So if we're comparing uh, vitality, uh, the Hanunuwa script is relatively more vigorous than the Buhid script, but both are still endangered scripts. For the motivation to use the language, Hanunuwa and Buhid are again relatively vigorous. They are part of the indigenous education program under the Department of Education. There are schools focusing on localized basic education, so that's K-12, such as Pamanaka or Para Lang Mangyan, Angkop sa Kulturang Aalagaan, Tugdaan, Kundasyon Hanunuwa Mangyan, Mangyan Education Center, to name a few. And again, Hanunuwa and Buhid are relatively vigorous languages. In the Linguistic College of Mindoro, Hanunuwa and Buhid actually are the two biggest uh, Mangyan languages in terms of population size. To use the script, to date, the Hanunuwa and Buhid working orthography using the Latin script haven't been approved and validated by the regional IPAD office. Um, or the Regional Indigenous Peoples Education Office. So it's difficult to align um, the orthography, the orthography based on the Indigenous script with the orthography based on the Latin script. And also most of the domains of use for the Indigenous script was lost. Script use um, in personal signatures for, for signing and for the Ambahan, which is the indigenous poem, are the top two script containing domains. Proposed national policies, such as the House Bill um, 1022 and House Bill 8785 on script use and advocacies favor by Bayin, the traditional writing system used by Tagalog speaking communities and, and not the extant scripts in the Philippines. So Hanunuwa and Buhid script are actually considered national cultural treasures. They are categorized as Philippine paleograph, meaning um, these two are extant or living scripts. So in addition to Surat Hanunuwa and Surat Buhid, you have um, Surat Tagbanwa and Surat Palawan, uh, two other indigenous scripts in a separate island. So just to see what an Ambahan is, which is the indigenous poem, this is Ambahan 38. And for the motivation to use the orthography, again, the Hanunuwa and Buhid working orthography using the Latin script haven't been approved and validated by the regional IPAD office. So it's difficult to align that one with the working orthography on the indigenous script. And for prior work on the indigenous script, there are uh, there is the legacy work done by POSMA and other scholars. So in the case of um, Surat Hanunuwa, they already have um, two editions or versions of a primer but for the rest of the communities it's uh, mostly it's their first um, community-based primer so what about the current orthography so the goal is for the processes of orthography development and materials development since we're also doing and developing pedagogic materials um, the goal is for the processes to be participatory, collaborative, and very much community-based so that um, the elders, the stakeholders, and the community in general have a sense that this is their project, this is their own um, documentation, and these are their materials. So if I would like to summarize maximum motivation, basically it, it's acceptability um, in the community. For maximum representation, usually we frame this as how to represent the language as close as, as possible. Uh, fortunately, Hanunuwa and Buhid are relatively conservative in terms of allophonic variation. Usually, you have um, one is to one mapping, M is M, B is B. Um, 
So native words are easily mapped to individual single shapes because again, this is an alpha syllabary. So you have um, a consonant and a default vowel for each basic form. However, Surat Hanunumo and Surat Muhid, since they are alpha syllabaries, they do not represent um, syllable codas. So that is not um, represented in the traditional way. So for example, to spell the word buhid in the traditional way, you use the symbol for um, ba with the diacritic below the b symbol to make it bu. And then you have he with the diacritic uh, on top of the base form for ha. So you have bu and he. But in the current orthography that the community is using, um, you have um, a vowel killer. So you add another C CB shape, another symbol, another basic shape for da. And then you add a vowel killer in in Buhid, it's called famaktaban, and that removes the vowel of, um, of the basic shape. So you have the, and then you have buhid and buhid. So that's one of the main difference. But I have extended this to to ask what to represent, which dial, which which version of the script, which variant of the script who to represent, how to represent, or even as why represent at all. Because in the case, again, of Mindoro, it's it's the southern um, Mangyan communities that uses the script. So you have Surat Hanunowo and then Surat Buhid. Um, the communities are spread over seven towns. So in the case of our work, we have surveyed all seven towns for culture bearers and elders who still use the script. And you have um, geographic variation of, of script shape. You have allography where for each, uh, for each basic CV shape, you see uh, differentiation in form. So here you have, for example, three different shapes. And then again, because the coverage is quite wide, you have seven towns composed of 26 barangays, 152 sitios, and we have engaged 364 elders. The question again of maximum representation does not deal only with um, if the script represents the language well, but whether for me at least, how everything is represented from, from the onset, from, from the script symbol, which elder, which location, which variant, those are, those are all of the questions um, that we have thought of for uh, representation. And this is a sample of um, how we've documented the script. Um, it is one of the activities during the documentation phase. So they are um, directed or narrated to um, with an ambahan, and then they are asked to, to write the, the poem on the traditional medium, which is a bamboo slate. Kalakao. Kalakao. O kalakao. Kan muriro. Kan mo. Rirok Rirok oh. Rirok Mag-iltaw And then one additional issue is for children, they also learn it to write using uh, pens, chalk on boards and not only with the traditional way so another question is how to like have a sustainable source of bamboo slates if they want to inscribe the scripts. So if I would like to summarize maximum representation, it's more or less integrity, integrity in all of its senses. 
And then for maximum ease of learning, which is easier to learn, again, in the traditional way, you spell it without the coda, but in the current orthography, um, you spell it with uh, a vowel killer. So initially, the elders were very hesitant in introducing a vowel killer. They wanted the more they wanted to, it to be um, in the traditional way. But when we did um, reading exercises and production exercises, even the elders cannot read some of their own writing because of the lack of the con of the coda. So, for example, in this case, buhi can be buhi, 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 buhi. So, without um, clear context, one cannot um, predict which word would be used in that particular construction. So, again, the maximum ease of learning is a question of acquisition, which is which one is easier. For maximum transfer, it involves the relationship of the developed orthography with that of nearby orthography and nearby languages. So in the case of Mindoro, since again, the, the language policy in, in basic education involves teaching the mother tongue, which is the L1, with the national language um, Filipino and then the official language English. You have three languages in the first grade. Up to the third grade, you drop the mother tongue in the fourth grade. And also complicating that um, setup is that the first script or system of writing you learn is the Latin script for all of the um, languages you are you are introduced at the first in the first grade, and then you only learn later um, Surat Hanunuwen Surat Bukit, which again is a different type of writing system because Latin script is an alphabet. So that Hanunuwen, so that Buhit are Abugidas or Alta Celebrados. So adaptability would be a question, but it extends beyond the issues of the orthography itself, but, but it uh, involves greater issues in the language policy and planning of, of Mindoro and of the Philippines in general. So for the last one, maximum ease of reproduction, basically it means produce more materials and in the context of indigenous scripts, digitalization and creation of font. But in the case of Mindoro, yes, the community wants more materials. They want workbooks, they want primers, they want storybooks, they want big books, small books, all of those. But they don't want to digitize the indigenous scripts. They hate fonts. They saw a shirt with the the font with the font of Surat Hanubu and Surat Buhi, then they hated it. So for example, in our case, if you haven't observed it, this is a scanned handwriting. So this is not uh, electronic font. This is not a digital font. So everything was handwritten and it was scanned and it was reproduced. It's difficult, but that's what the community wants. And then again, the maximum ease of reproduction is a question of sustainability. So is this sustainable? Maybe, maybe not. Some other linguists and script experts say it's always easier to just create a font, but what would you do with that if the community do not like to develop a font? So here are what the primers look like for all four um, quadrants. So you have two different uh, primers for Buhid for the northern and the southern, and then the Hanuno uh, community split into two because um, the Occidental Mindoro community wants a more traditional way for their orthography, and then the the Oriental Mindoro um, uses the the current orthography, the one with the vowel killer. So some references, acknowledgments, and thanks, funding statement. And then thank you in my mother tongue.